Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I have kind of a review video for you of the Paul Rubens Metallic Watercolors. The company Ardix, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, reached out to me and asked, asked if I want to review their Paul Rubens Metallic Watercolors. And here you see me unpackaging them. I really like the packaging. I think it looks super pretty and it's perfect if you want them for a gift. And I also think they are super nicely packaged. I'm having a little bit of a hard job to get the first pen out of the box. Here it is. I will unwrap them and there is no name of the colors or number on the pan itself but it's on the side of that paper so I will just leave this side on my pan so I always know which color I have in there. Before I'm going to use the paints, I will add water to them with a spray bottle just to make them react more easily. That's always something that makes it much easier to paint with metallic watercolors. I let them sit for about 5 minutes or so and now I swatch them out. The name of the colors is on that swatch chart which comes with the paints. And it starts with the pearl silver white and then there is the pearl platinum. The next is flash yellow and deep interference yellow. The next was the deep interference orange and the royal gold. That was the bronze sateen and the flare red. Then there is the deep interference red, the wine red. And the last on this side are pink and rose red. They are all a bit different in their way that they are shimmering. Some have more gold pigments, some have more silver shimmer and some have shimmer in the color itself. Um, on the right side we have carp myrtle, symphony purple, deep interference blue, symphony blue, shiny blue which is one of my favorite colors, deep interference green, fruit green, golden maroon, then you, we have dark green, brown, and the last two are silver black and flash purple. Flash purple is also very stunning I feel. The carb myrtle, it's the first on the top right, is more like interference color. That means it shimmers more blue, violet, and the color itself is more pink. Here I have also made a second swatch card which fits my box. And I've used the swatch it stamp set for it. So I have it ready to go. I like to to put it into the box and can uh, can see the the colors and the sheet that comes with the set I have to fold up and um, so I just have the the color names. I'm going to create a spread in my watercolor journal and the company also sent me that masking tape which is meant to frame the painting so that you get a nice edges. And of course I will not use only the oops the metallic paints. I will use the metallic paints to add accents to the page. The book I'm working in is from Kunst und Papier. It's a German brand. It's a nice art journal. It's not um uh, not super heavyweight paper, so it crinkles. And I usually only 
paint on the right side of the pages of the book because I don't like the back sides when they are crinkly. I want to pick one of my favorite color combinations today. I've already used it for a tutorial here on YouTube and I believe I also have a tutorial how I made my my spread here and how I am inspired to use the colors that I'm using. I will try to not forget to link this up at the end of the video. I will start with my normal watercolors and create kind of an abstract spread today. I also add my watercolors because it's good for the brushes if you don't have to, to push the paints too hard to get them wet. I'm starting with the Naples yellow and I just put some um, random shapes onto my page. Next I'm using either the Opera Rose or maybe it's the Brilliant um, Rose from Schminke. I can't remember which one I've put into this pan I'm using here. I'm going to add a clip to the page so it doesn't buckle that much. Here I'm introducing, I believe, the Carmine Red. It's from Rosa Gallery. And the turquoise is also from Rosa Gallery. I try to leave some white areas on the page because that makes a page look more dimensional. If you cover everything with your watercolors, it will look flat. I'm drawing the page with my heat tool in between so I can keep on working and don't have to wait until it's dry. I will add a second layer where I want to introduce the dark brown which is on the color palette I'm using and I don't have such a dark brown in my box at the moment and I'm just trying out different combinations on the left page. That's all always something I do with the left side in this journal. I just put down some color if I'm not sure if I want to use it. I am grabbing just another watercolor palette where I have a dark brown because I don't want to mix it.
I'm playing intuitively on this page. This is a perfect exercise if you're stuck into an art block maybe. You just want to create something, just plop down some color. One thing about that paper in the book, if um, you go over with another layer of watercolor, the colors almost reactivate immediately underneath. And I believe you can remove a lot of the paint when you re-wet it. That's sometimes a bit difficult to work with because you don't um, you are not able to create really good layers or do some glazing. The brush I'm using here is from Zen Art Supplies. It's their black tulip set and it comes with this gorgeous rigger brush. I will do a review on these brushes soon on my channel, but this brush is one already one of my favorites for doing some fine line work. And so I just want to use it here. And I don't like what I have made here with the circle, so I just paint over it. I want to bring in these brown lines a bit more because I like the texture so I'm adding more brown and then I go in with that rigger brush again and try to move the paint through the lines. It's a bit difficult because of the paper. It just doesn't work as good as the paper pad I'm usually using when I create these loose watercolor paintings. It's a bit hard to get the color flowing, so I just tilt my paper or my, my sketchbook and then it worked. I now want to go in with some of the beautiful metallic paints and I just looked at my swatch card to see which ones I want to use on this page. And first I want to just draw also some simple shapes or circles so I get some metallic accents on the background and therefore I'm using more water. The more water you're using with them the less opaque they are of course but you can uh, use them really creamy and get a great opacity and I will show this at the end when I add some gold accents. I will also use one of the gold paints. I believe I used the royal gold. And the blue I'm using here is the shiny blue. As I said, it's one of my favorite colors. And create more shapes on the background. And then I will let this dry completely before I add some botanical elements. Oh, and yes, here I'm using some of the pink, I believe. It's the pink itself and just add some accents on the pink areas.
I now want to add some leaves in and therefore I'm using also a brush from the Black Tulip series because they have an amazing fine point tip and this is perfect to make leaves I feel. With these paints it's a bit harder than with usual watercolors to paint leaves because I think of the mica in it and you need to use a lot of water to get them flowing and then you have a lot of water on the brush and that makes thicker lines and makes it a bit harder to to paint fine details. The company also sent me a little travel sketchbook I would say it's really a tiny size and I really like it it has watercolor paper in it really heavyweight and it has a pay for perforation on each page so you can tear out the pages and I think I will take this with me on holidays and maybe paint some tiny postcards that I can send maybe or I can just rip the pages out later and make a holiday collage of the sketches I have done. I will probably make a video of my travel supplies that I'm taking with me this year on holidays and there I can show you that little journal. What I also got from this company were some banana brushes and they are really nice. I'm sure I will show them soon in a video. They are like makeup sponges, pretty big and they have the shape of a banana and <laughs> I think they are super fun. What I also can say about these paints is that they don't have any smell to them, just like watercolors. It's about two or three years ago I bought a metallic watercolor set on Amazon. I believe it was from Painter Sisters and I asked beforehand if the colors or the paints have any smell. And they told me no, they don't have any smell and when they arrived they <laughs> had a really bad chemical smell and I returned them for that reason and never bought any other metallic watercolors. I don't want to uh, paint that smells strange, then I will not use it and that's not worth it. I now will let this dry completely and then add in some details with Posca paint pens and also set some more metallic accents. Here you can already see how shimmery the colors are on the page. I will try to make some photos where you can see how they behave when they are dry and they will be at the end of this video. I pulled out some of my Posca paint pens and I'm using colors that are matching my page. I used white, I, I believe kind of a light yellow. I don't know if I used something else. We will see. I'm just making some patterns here and there. I like the contrast of the white against the brown, so I'm painting little circles in these areas.
and this marker I'm using here is not a Posca paint pen it's an acrylic marker from adding and I just make some tiny yellow dots over some of the turquoise circles Here I'm redrawing the leaves to make them pop up from the page a bit more. I don't redraw all of them, just a few, because then I think it would be too much. And if there are some on the background, it gives everything more depth. Finally, I'm adding some gold accents with the metallic paints and therefore I'm just making a very thick paint and then it works really great and it's super opaque and covers up um, the paint underneath. And I just make some little ovals over my page here and there. This one is the royal gold again and I will also use I believe the flash purple I can't remember or maybe the symphony purple I'm using a purple color just to add some just a few accents that are a bit off the color scheme so it makes it interesting but if you do this, you don't want to add too much of it, so it looks a bit weird, I think. I now will remove the washi tape, and I'm curious to see if there's something underneath or if it will ruin my paper, because that's something that is happening very often. Either the tape doesn't stick very good or it ruins the paper. And here I have to say everything comes off very easy and there is no paint under the washi tape. And that was my video for today. I hope you like the page and I hope you enjoyed the video and it was helpful for you if you have any questions don't hesitate to post them in the comments. I have made some photos to try to capture the glittery shimmer. It's a bit hard to get that on camera um, but they are shimmering way more than you can expect on the photos I think. I'm really happy with the paints, truly like them 
and I will use them in the future more often of course.